Hi guys, today we have Robert Zikri, Lead UX Specialist at Tiger Spike Dubai. Hi Robert. Hi Eugene, how are you? Thanks for, for having me today. Thank you for joining and how things are going? Are you in Dubai now? Uh, well, everything's good. Um, I'm currently not in Dubai. I took the last flight uh, home back to Cairo right before the lockdown in March and we are still locked in uh, Egypt. Um, the flight hasn't returned back and um, well, so far, the, the family is good and healthy, thankfully. Um, things are going well. We hope uh, just uh, to pass those days and weeks and months safely and just for, for this whole pandemic to, to go away, hopefully soon. Um, so yeah, we, we are better than we deserve and I'm thankful and I feel blessed for this. I want to give a little bit of detail for listeners regarding Tiger Spike. So it's a digital services company which has offices globally. Robert, as far as I know, you had switched from developer to designer. Can you please give a little bit details? How did you become a designer and what was actually your initial start? Uh, sure. Um, well, my career started about 14 years ago, right after university. Um, I was uh, in computer science. I have a bachelor's degree uh, in, in specialized in computer science and information systems. And throughout university, I wasn't that really interested in development or in coding. I was more interested uh, in, um, in, in courses like graphics, like human computer interaction things that are interfacing with humans rather than the back end stuff or algorithms or data structures or or whatnot fast forward after uni after i got graduated i worked as a software engineer for a few startups and smaller companies in egypt uh all the way until 2009 2010 when i was getting serious about ux it wasn't really a big thing back then uh even the term ux Although it was coined long before, but it wasn't as prominent as it is now. Um, but I knew that this is the thing for me. I, I'm more interested in design. I'm more interested in human interaction or in the way people use um, uh, software that I built. So I, you would usually find me focusing on developing the front end more than the back end or more interested in front end technologies more than back end technologies and plugins and uh, tools and data sets and whatnot. Um, so I I started to get serious and um, read more books. Of course, I, I started by Steve Krug's Don't Make Me Think book, which is basically the handbook or almost the Bible for anyone uh, wanting to jump to UX. And I uh, took a few courses, uh, started to do some freelance work on the side. I didn't really know what I was doing back in 2010. But I was just trying to get uh, to get into the field while doing my my day job as a software engineer. And a few months down the line, few projects down the line, uh, I started to get more projects being freelancing until eventually uh, back in 2012, 2013, I, I finally had a full time job as a UX designer. I, I, I'm grateful for having that opportunity back in uh, a company called Tribal DDB. Uh, this is when I, I knew that I'm in my element. Um, design for me was, was always about uh, how can we solve problems. I knew for software developers, they solve a lot of problems. Some of them are technical based, some of them are coming or stemming from users or business or requirements. But uh, I've always been fascinated with the way software can unlock opportunities uh, and can solve users' problems and business problems and serve their needs. Uh, it's something that's always touched a nerve with me. And I knew early on when I was a software engineer that I wouldn't be the rock star that I should. Um, there are tons of better developers out there that are more interested in tools and coding practices and uh, latest technologies, and they are up to date. I wasn't I wasn't going to be that person. I knew that it's not it's not there for me. Um, so yeah, fast forward. Right now I'm a lead UX uh, specialist at Tiger Spike Dubai. Almost nine or ten years um, after doing that jump, 
and uh, and I haven't regretted it. <laughs> it's it's still going well for me. I I love my my profession. I love my job, and it's it's uh, it's one of the things that I'm 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 grateful uh, for having because you you feel like you you're doing something that you're made for. At least for me, I'm passionate about UX because it's something that I I think I I enjoy every day. Uh, looking forward to projects. Looking forward to. Um, having those workshops, strategy meetings, and talking to users, talking to the business, talking to the team. It's uh, something that's very rewarding for me. So, yeah, that's that's almost the full journey in under five minutes. What kind of responsibilities do you have currently? Uh, at the moment, I am both hands-on and hands-off. Um, I lead the team for the UX specialists in Dubai. Um, so that team is responsible for uh, undertaking the work. They are overseeing the delivery of the projects. And some projects I am more hands-on than the others. So um, uh, some projects I will be actually doing the responsibility for delivering the user experience, uh, doing the usability testing, doing the user research, um, doing the facilitation for the workshops and uh, ideation and strategy. Uh, uh, workshops fac facilitation I do it myself or I will be leading and giving the direction uh, with the team uh, in projects while they are de uh, delivering uh, delivering the work and they are uh, responsible for the final outcomes so we in Tiger Spike we we are a digital services company we are um, focused on strategy and digital transformation and most of all we're uh, focused on user experience um, one of our um, uh, uh, main ethos is we uh, try to improve and impact people's lives through technology. Um, so user experience is everything. It's, it's, um, it's as far as users concerned, the interface is the the full product. However, what lies underneath the, that interface from all the systems, from all the back end, from all the processes, also from all the services which need service design and the business, um, um, the way it works, which needs business design. This is something that we are doing with our clients. We are investigating the work and we're investigating the problems, we're researching the user needs and we are trying to together partner with our clients to come up with the best possible solutions and the best possible outcomes for that problem. Um, so yeah, uh, my my day to day work is is many uh, activities from research, from discovery, from leading the team, from uh, putting together processes and uh, try to work with the team on producing efficiencies in the way we produce work and having this cohesion in in the way deliver uh, we we deliver. Uh, work and we we hit the KPIs for for uh, for projects with the clients. Can you say a little bit about the project that you have worked in last couple of years and what was the most impressive one? Well, there are two main things or two main projects that uh, keep popping in my head. Um, so we just wrapped up a very very interesting project with one of the biggest telecos in in Dubai and in the world. Um, we were hired to look at their existing web acquisition through the website. How how are people going to the website and buying new lines or SIMs, and how those uh, SIMs get delivered and activated to the customers? Uh, we looked at the problems in the website. We've done usability testing. Uh, we looked at all the things that are not clear or all the enhancements and improvements that can happen so that they increase the acquisition. It's um, it's a very good project, especially with our clients being hands-on with us. Um, uh, the client team are superb in the way they provide the data and analytics and uh, the support that we need to investigate. It, it was a true partnership with them. And uh, we've introduced and redesigned a few things in the flow for acquisition, and it's currently being developed at the moment. Um, and we're looking forward to see if uh, uh, these improvements are going to achieve the intended uh, KPIs and intended outcomes that we are after. Because if not, it's going to be improved even further. We're going to test again and improve it again. 
Um, so that's one of the highlights from the past couple of months. We've just wrapped it up. Um, to answer your question, also one of the biggest um, clients uh, and projects that I work with, it was for three consecutive years, starting 2015, I worked closely with the biggest airline in Dubai and almost in the world. Um, and it's, it's, it's been very rewarding working closely with the team. Uh, I was embedded in the, in the team that's responsible for developing their uh, app. Uh, the main flagship app that uh, travelers will use to book their itineraries and to manage the whole trip and to check in and to um, maybe reschedule their flights or check the passengers' uh, weight allowance and whatnot. Um, it was very rewarding working with a big uh, development team. So you have the iOS team, you have the Android team, almost 18 or 20 developers and QA engineers and product managers. It was a beehive. And I was embedded with another uh, UI designer uh, for a few years, and we we were really challenged to the limit, uh, jumping between one project to the other, between one stream to the other, between implementation and strategy, research and product management and support. So it's um, it was very good. But the most important and most rewarding thing for me personally was. I was able to see uh, hundreds of thousands of people using the designs and the improvements and the experience that I work with the team on. Uh, with almost every sprint, uh, we release something and we see the usage increase or the time it takes to finish a task decreases or the satisfaction increase or the iOS app store reviews gets better. Um, it's uh, it's it's very rewarding to to try to impact um, people's uh, lives at scale with uh, with such apps and digital products that we design. Uh, that was a very very good and challenging um, time, and I, I'm actually looking forward to a challenge that's like that, um, possibly soon, hopefully. What kind of advantages for business to hire? digital consultant company which will help with design services uh, it's a very good question um, because uh, in my opinion the word consultancy sometimes have a bad rep around it um, in the past consultants are being stereotyped as people coming in suits they analyze the business they produce big reports after a few months or sometimes years and they leave um, in 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 the way we do uh, consultancy in Tiger Spike and my team specifically, um, we look for being partners with the client. We are embedded with them. We have a skin in the game with them. Um, we we are being consultated while we are also being practitioners. We we deliver the work. We look at the problems together with the client. We uh, investigate things together. And when the time comes to improve things and put together for uh, solutions that will improve uh, uh, the problems that we've seen or will in, uh, introduce the impact that we want to achieve, we do the actual work that delivers it. We don't um, uh, just deliver a report at the end of engagement and then we leave. We oversee the delivery of that work, uh, whether we're doing it ourselves or some other teams are doing it. Um, being consultative or being a consultant is one of the... Um, the hardest, challenging, most rewarding, most exciting things in our line of work um, because every partner, every client that we deal with uh, has a different strategy, have different set of problems, have different mindsets, have uh, different, uh, even different past experiences. Some people have great experiences with previous design teams or previous consultancies. Some don't. Um, so we have to be adaptable and flexible to tweak our approach for that specific client, for that specific context uh, and their uh, specific problem. Um, so I've, I've been involved with many uh, clients, uh, some in, uh, in the airlines, as I mentioned, uh, we, uh, in, at the beginning of 2020, we were embedded at uh, 
one of the, the most exciting museums that are due to open very soon in Dubai, um, doing some service design and business design around it and operations. Um, it's not only digital, we're looking more at the bigger picture and how they would make the whole museum uh, so seamless and so uh, intuitive for visitors and also engaging uh, to, to uh, their visitors, uh, whether they are people with families uh, and kids or people with disability or um, maybe just a couple, a married couple or, uh, or people going with friends. Every part of the journey for every type of users or visitors have been thought of, um, or at least to the limit that we could uh, invest time in, given the time allowed. So yeah, being consultant is is, is interesting um, in our line of work. I think at the majority, um, almost like eighty or ninety percent of the work we do as UX designers is based on consultative practices. So the way we present work, the way we sell ideas and educate our teams and our stakeholders about the work we do, about why we talk to the users and what happened when we actually talk to the users. And we, we spell out a strategy, we facilitate workshops, we produce reports after we analyze inputs and synthesize learnings from whether desk research or secondary research or user research or or any type of activities we do to investigate evidence and validate assumptions it's this is what consult consultative being consultative is about and I, i've been in many meetings and i've seen many designers myself included where we got shot down or our ideas our designs didn't um, fly well with with teams just because we didn't listen enough or we didn't um, practice the best presentation techniques or storytelling techniques that we could use. Uh, this is this is all part of the job. Design is not about pixel or about, about uh, using the latest software or making Figma uh, our our go to tool for for doing work. It's it's not. Design is, is way more than this. Design is how we produce solutions so that it impact businesses and serve users. And in order to do this, we 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 run through many hoops, um, and th th I think that's the beauty of being practitioners while also being consultants, uh, rather than consultants only on the management level without having a skin in the game. We've talking about skills of UX designers. Mm. Can you briefly describe top three? of skills that you consider as the most important to have currently? Uh, that's interesting. Um, my, my view has changed over the years, but my last point of view, the top three in, the, in my personal list has always been um, flexibility, adaptability, and focus. Um, so being flexible means usually we, we are not going to be doing uh, the things that we intend to do with the way we intend to do in the time that we want uh, or being allowed to us. It's it's a difficult, complex world out there. So people need to have that mindset of hacking things through. If we are giving a two-week uh, time box for discovery, then let's figure out the best way to de-risk the project, the most uh, riskiest assumptions around the project or around the user around the business, around the context of use. Let's look at the majority, where is the focus areas, and let's be flexible in the way we, we do uh, research to validate those assumptions. Or if we, if we don't have the right tools or the right project structure or the, the thing that we believe is working in the books and articles that we read, uh, it's, it's all right. Let's make the best out of what we've got and let's move forward. Uh, this ties a bit with the next point about being adaptable. Um, like I mentioned, I, I personally worked with a lot of verticals around airlines. In my previous job, I was working with FM, FMCG brands. Um, I worked with newspapers and uh, telcos. And, and every one of those clients have their own unique problems and their own unique constraints and business uh, opportunities as well. And 
I think UX um, uh, designers, we we have a very, very unique opportunities um, going from one vertical to another, from one problem to another, sometimes applying a solution that worked in the past, but in a completely different new context, that same solution might work. So if you worked on an e-commerce website for FMCG brand that's selling baby milk, for example, some of the best practices that you do can be reutilized if you are trying to do an e-commerce for selling, um, let's say, SIM cards, like I was I was just uh, mentioning my latest client. Um, some some practices wouldn't, and that's all right. Um, but we have to to be adaptable with the way we deliver work and we the way we we look at at problems. And the more experience and the more problems we face, um, and the more clients we work with, uh, the better because it expands out our horizon. Um, and that that's why it's very unique being on the agency side rather than on client side because if you are a UX designer working on a specific product for the specific organization, you're going deeper and deeper into the same vertical while being on the agency side have the benefit of being like a butterfly uh, flying from one project to another, from one specific problem to another, from one specific team and business uh, um, t uh, business stakeholders uh, to another. It's it's very nice and very unique. Every one of, of those um, uh, verticals have their own opportunities and their own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the third point about UX skills is being focused. Um, this is this is something that I've I've always been passionate about and I've always been um, opinionated and hot headed almost sometimes. Um, as UX specialists, um, we have the unique um, position to be the user advocate in the room. Uh, <clears throat> we should be focused on what we are there to solve. We are there to solve user problem. We are there to bring the user voice uh, to the conversation that everybody's having. So imagine if a uh, UX specialist is embedded with the developers teams and couple of other uh, visual or UI designers and product managers and scrum masters and whatnot and everyone is talking about a specific maybe back-end problem or integration or API or whatever uh, if, if UX specialists got sucked into that conversation too much and they forgot why is this feature important to begin with why are we doing this is it just for the sake of using the latest development language or we want to be featured in one of those tech magazines, which is all right. Those are very, very valid uh, reasons, and every every team should uh, strive to achieve it. But if this is coming to the price of delivering value to the user, or we are not solving the actual thing that users keep telling us in the research we do with them, that this is the actual thing that they care about, then we are not focused. Um, and as as advocates for users, we have to be more vocal, um, we have to uh, to pick the moments, of course, and pick the battles and be uh, consultative, like I mentioned before, about the approach and the way we tell stories and the way we present user research so that people can get more empathy uh, for the users that we serve. Um, this is the laser sharp focus that I'm, I'm talking about, not being bogged down by tools or processes or business or technical problems. Although all those are very important um, and unique uh, parts of the formula of producing work, um, but also making sure that we are uh, there for the user and we are solving the right problems for them. Which designers do you follow on Twitter or elsewhere and who inspires you? Okay. So uh, one of the, the biggest influences of, of my career is Mike Montero. Uh, I can't thank him enough, to be honest with you, for the books and the articles and the talks that he's um, written and given. Early on, I, I read one of the most influential books of, in my career about uh, design. It's called Design is a Job. Um, and uh, later on, lastly, it was a few months ago, uh, 
he released a book called Ruined by Design. And those two, uh, it, it's not end of spectrum, but those two important books are talking about two different subjects, still about design. Um, he's influenced me uh, personally, and I, I shaped a lot of my views in the design industry based on, on the things that he had mentioned. I'm also an avid uh, follower for Jared Spool, um, the way he's uh, laying out uh, strategy and being user-centered, being focused, and uh, how UX teams should be structured and should operate to be uh, high-functioning uh, teams, almost like commandos. It's, it's very, very uh, inspiring what he's doing. Um, I'm following him on Twitter on a daily basis. He keeps tweeting. Um, uh, very very cool stuff um from from the rest of the industry there is uh, tobias van schneider uh i I'm, i really love what he's doing uh he's a very very cool designer and uh he's he's making the uh, a dent in the way industry uh perceive work uh design work i mean um his blog is very good as well um and lastly, someone that uh, uh, that I follow uh, is Halley. He's the founder of Weno. Uh, it's an, a small agency, I think, in Iceland and San Francisco. And he's one of those hu beautiful human beings that um, uh, w when he tells his story and when he tells his views about teams and producing good work for great brands, it's it's very inspiring what he's doing with his team at Ueno, uh, and I, I follow him closely. Moving forward about the inspiration, what was what kind of recommendations can you give to listeners about your favorite book or book that you have recently read and you consider as nice one to explore to read, or maybe any kind of podcast or some some kind of content that will be relevant? Well, the, the last design book I read was Ruined by Design. Um, I actually didn't read it. I listened to it on Audible, and it's uh, by Mike Montero, of course, as I mentioned. Um, it's very interesting to listen to the book written by Mike and being narrated by Mike's voice. So he's actually saying his words the way he intended it to be. Uh, I, I definitely recommend to be uh, to be listened to rather than read it's a beautiful book um, he's talking about the responsibility of of designers to the world that we live in um, how designers have sometimes ruined the world by producing uh, work or producing designs that are having dark patterns in them or not doing the right ethical, thing to be done uh, some of them are are uh, collecting data when they don't have to or they shouldn't and those products will use this data for later um, advertising campaigns or monetizing this data which is very unethical and that's why um, gdpr came to existence in the first place um, his focus he's focusing on uber and twitter and facebook and um, although they have done good in, in terms of the products they have produced to the world, but they have also done harms to communities and societies that they uh, they have been in. So that's a very recommended book. Um, I think it, in terms of podcasts, um, the Design Better podcast is, is a very good one. Uh, it's by Envision. Um, it's, they uh, keep um, in, inviting really, really great guests that I personally look up to. Uh, one of the latest episodes I was listening to was by Julie Zhu. Uh, she was talking about her uh, book uh, about management and being a design manager and the differences between leaders and managers and how can you lead and inspire design teams. Um, it's, it's a very good episode. And um, uh, yeah, uh, I think those are top of, uh, of the mind uh, in inspiring books and podcasts that I uh, that I had. Do you have any company or product that impressed you the most and why? I mean, 
for example, a lot of people are talking about Apple products because they do really great product design, like physical product design. And what about you? Do you have any kind of company that you're really following and you think that they are making a big impact for the whole industry or just for society? Well, I personally look at things that are not specifically related to the digital design. I, I look at product design from its holistic point of view. Um, so the, the top things that always pop in my head when talking about uh, products or companies that inspire me, um, it's usually around SpaceX and Tesla. I love what Elon Musk is doing with them. Uh, he's running two different industrial and heavily complex uh, companies as if it's a software house the actual thing that runs tesla and making the tesla car very engaging and very loved by its its drivers and and customers is the software how it's it's being updated and um without even people noticing it's continuous improvement continuous integration and continuous deployment at its best and making the whole fleet get smarter is something that's it's very interesting. The, the car itself from technology and, and the batteries and uh, drive terrain and, and, and the speed and the drag races with Lamborghinis and Ferraris, that's very nice. But the way that he and the Tesla team designed the car so that it gets smarter um, and uses the machine learning and AI to, to achieve just that, that's very inspiring. Um, also, I love what, what he's doing with SpaceX. It's also being run as if it's a software company uh, packaged in a rocket. Uh, the whole reusability for the Falcon 9 rockets uh, coming back to Earth and landing uh, on docks or platforms in the sea, that's, that's something that's never heard of. And it's successful. He have reduced the price to, to launch rockets by 20 or 30 fold. It's, it's, it's just inspiring. Um, and they, I think last week, they, they have just launched the first Dragon mission with the first human um, uh, astronauts by a, a private company. This is, this is a, quite an achievement for, for humanity. And it's just based on really superb industrial design and product design, and software design, where everything is working well together um, and well thought of for every little detail. I, uh, I, I really appreciate what, what uh, uh, those guys at Tesla and SpaceX are doing with Elon Musk uh, for, for the advancement of, of the humanity in general. The last but not least question is, is there a something that annoys you, pisses you off in this world that you would like to change? And if you have this kind of thing that bother you, um, have you thought about any ways to, to fix it, to improve it? Um, well, I wouldn't say pissing me off. Um, it's something that's slightly um, annoying or irritating. Um, in this part of the world, I'm based in Dubai and I've been in, in Dubai for nine years now. Um, and there isn't a uniquely established design uh, guidelines or design system for Arabic design. Um, this is something that, that irritates me because it's not only for Dubai, I mean for the Arabic region. Arabic is, is the fourth used language on the internet by a whopping 400 million users. It's, it's something that's, um, uh, that's slightly wrong, uh, in my opinion, to just take the Western design language and the Western design practices and just flip it from right to left rather than uniquely um, uh, localize it to Arabic. Um, it's not a matter of translating websites that are being designed by Westerns to the Arabic language and consider it done. Look at what the Scandinavian design language have established. They have their own unique way, uh, their, their own unique design language that's uh, apparent. And look at what the Japanese design language is doing. They are using the language as well as the culture to design uh, properly relevant experiences for the target users in Japan. Um, that's both using the cultural reference, the cultural uh, 
metaphors, the, the language, the way they use the language itself. I, I love what they're doing over there. Um, and I, I, I'm currently um, on, on, on the way or, or kicking off the work to uh, start establishing some, something with the design community in the Arab region. So I'm, I've reached out to designers in Egypt and in Dubai and content strategists as well, UX writers, UI designers, brand designers, things uh, or uh, disciplines that will clearly impact the way we do design, truly Arab design. Um, and it's something that I've been always passionate about uh, because design doesn't happen in isolation. It, it's relevant to a culture and uh, it's great what's going on in the United States and Silicon Valley and the design language that's been established by all the product companies there. But just localizing the way they do work or just taking a material design theme and uh, flip it to right to left, that's not really culturally relevant design. It's just a template kind of, uh, of, of doing visual design. Um, one of the other examples that keep pissing me, me off or annoying me is every time I look into an app or a website in Arabic and you have a home button with a home icon underneath it, but the actual translation of home is, is not relevant really in Arabic, uh, it doesn't really convey anything. It's, it, it, it only means one of two things, is it either the house that you live in, which is not really the home page, or uh, the home as in the land that you're coming from or your na your national home being Egyptian or being Ukrainian or British which also is not relevant for the home page so why are we using a home icon and we are translating it to the main page as in Arabic main page um, that's that's still baffling me and that's that's just the microcosm of of the problems uh, there is more problems that are uh, happening when Western designs get Arabized or get translated um, and I think that that should change um, and we have great design community in the Arab world uh, in this part of the world we we have very great potential we just need to be focused and organized and produce good work um, to, to serve our communities thanks a lot Robert thank you for this interview and for contributing your time and yeah, take care in this volatile year. And thank you, listeners. Uh, thank you very much, Eugene. Thank you for having me and um, all the best with your podcast. Really appreciate having me with you. Thank you.